Well, let's have some fun. It is Saturday night, and because I'm such a partier, I'm at my bench. Uh, kids are watching E.T. Everybody's upstairs doing other stuff, and I have clearance to fiddle. So, just to recap, some of you folks have told me more than once, hey, why don't you look at Russian dive watches? And I owned a few 20, 30 years ago. But I took it to heart, and I've sort of been looking on and off. We got this one. I don't know if this is Soviet or post-Soviet era. I assume it's post-Soviet. But it was insanely cheap. It was so cheap, I couldn't believe it. So it's a plated brass case. It's got a totally stuck bezel. I don't even know if that's supposed to turn. Looks like it's got salt deposits all over it. Uh, one of the things I'm excited about is this beautiful root beer color of the dial. I don't know if that's original, but look at the crazy beautiful mud cracking on there. And the nice tan loom. This is, uh, it's got this funky wibbly crown. I don't know, I don't know what's up with that. I'll have to see what that deal is. And it uses, um, but the case back system, same kind of case back system that like um, Bulova loved using this case back system. Seiko in the 7000 series also used it a lot. I'd, or, I'd previously taken this off, so don't worry about that. But anyway, you've got a ring here, and you have your case back, and there's no stampings in there that I can see. It's, it's a runner, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, so this is this is kind of a standard old school setup. It's indirect, well, it's center seconds, but the seconds are driven off of this wheel here. You've got this uh, this little spring sits on the bottom of the pinion for the sweep hand, and what this is does is it makes this so that the sweep hand doesn't flutter. So that it, it only, it's not like, it doesn't jiggle and giggle around. It just moves forward slowly. So this is old school in that it has a separate train bridge, barrel bridge, and then balance cock. It should be pretty straightforward. I don't think there's going to be anything super funky. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to find. It's always interesting to do this kind of stuff because... You never quite know what's going to happen. Especially when you're working on a model like this, which is um, not one that I have spares for, so I better be I better be careful, right? Hang on a second. I'm get on a couple of, couple of my handy-dandy thingies. Okay. Okay. Where are those other tweezers? I was sitting here looking at other stuff and I kind of made a mess, which is sort of my thing. Uh, and I... Don't know where I put those other fine tip tweezers. Okay. I think that Sebastian probably stole them. And it's real par for course for him, because he loves my watch tools. Just her arm. Stud holder. Well, it's pretty basic finishing. Screw that down. Aha! Okay, good. Wow, look at that. It's so simple. So you pull it out and the crown locks and you push it in and it turns. Whew. 
Well, you know, if it works, it ain't stupid. Something to be said for simplicity. Okay. Let's look at that. Look at that wacky. Look at that mud cracking. Pretty sun faded. And here is our case. So I think that is supposed to rotate. I think it's just glued in place with salt and crap. What we got in here? What's that all about? Uh huh. Handy dandy little washery dilly thing, and it's extraordinarily dirty. And there is the remains of gasket. Yep, that's how that goes. A little flat rubber gasket. Yeah, this thing just will not turn. Okay, I'll look at that in a second. Let's put this back together. Yeah, I can feel it springing around in there. There we are. Whoops. No, that is not where we are. Come on. Okay. See, it's a hand winder. It just does not want to sit down. Definitely does run, though. Okay, so let's... That sure is pretty. You can see it's a runner. It looks like that color is what it's... Well... Look at the edge of the dial, though. It's kind of cut, kind of a blue thing going on. I've read that sometimes these things are blue. Wacky. Okay, let's get. The problem is, is Sebastian's a smart little person, and he has. He's also not easily deterred when he has an idea, and he loves being in here. Just loves it. Loves my bench and all that stuff. Really, really, really just is super happy to be rolling around in here. Okay. As a result, nothing is organized. I spent the day doing other stuff. So let me pull this handset. Thought you might like to see this. That's why our bezel wasn't rotating. I'm not sure what that is. Paint? Chalk, the finest Colombian. I don't know. I'm not going to be finding out this. So this is an old school wire retention setup. Uh, the 62 MES had a setup like this with these kinds of dimples and the, sort of the in and outs on it. I don't know what this stuff is. Is that stuff God paint? Maybe it's paint. Belong to a painter. Maybe so. Okay. So I have the hands off. Now it is time. Gosh darn it, Sebastian. I can't believe it. Okay, so. Uh, there we go. I didn't do the thing where I stopped it from because I knew it had almost no power left in it. So, okay. Oh, I started doing an experiment to clean off the corrosion on these hands. It looks okay. Doesn't want to let go, though. I'll have to get creative. 
I'm not going to go nuts on it though. I, I don't think there's any way to do that without losing the the original loom, which frankly is not something I feel like doing. Hmm. I wonder what my rust evap, evapo rust would do. Wish I had another set of hands and try it. Okay, let's get this cool thing out. What a strange system. I mean, it's kind of like the citizen system. Huh, isn't that fun? So it's like with Seiko, you have the die shock setting, which is the, the jewel in the frame. And then you have the stone. A little triangular diddly. It's very neat. Come on, get out of here. I can't believe Sebastian stole my other... Sigh. Someday I'm going to find where he hides all the tools that he's yoinked. Okay. Come on, open up, open up. There we go. Stop fighting me on this. Okay. Come on. Wow. Mm -hmm. Hmm. There is one of the things that's particular, peculiar to this kind of Russian tech is they love these little shims to change the spacing in the of the and shake of the balance. Come on, where are my good tweezers, Sebastian? Okay, well, we got to get that, uh, we got to get that movement ring off of there, because we got to pull the, well, not yet, not yet. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out the steps to do this. Never hurts to take a little bit of time to look at what you're doing to formulate a plan. So let's get that pallet fork cock out of here. Come on. I've got to find those other, I've got to find those other tweezers. Where did Sebastian put them? Okay. Let's go. See, look, my red ones. Not that these are the, necessarily the perfect tools for this, but they're the ones I'm used to using. Come on. Get out of there. Boy, hang on a second. Okay. Make in progress. This, uh, this piece is bolted together. I don't think it's been serviced since. Oh, it's nice finishing on the pallet fork. That's pretty good. So, oh, no. Hmm. 
So let's pull the train. I'm not doing that for any other reason than, I don't know, it just seems like the right thing to do. So you can see your train there. So this is the little friction spring that stops the pinion on the fourth wheel from fluttering. Okay. Let's pull these things. It's just kind of... It's dirty. I've seen worse though. Hmm. Everything's just kind of, I don't know, kind of oily. Thank goodness there's no rust, though. This looks decent enough. Okay. Come over here and let's pull that pinion. There we go. Old school. The old way to do it. Hmm. Nice. Jeweled in the center wheel. Get your nice Bostock thing there. All right. So let's cap this stuff up. Oh, that's something I hadn't looked at. Yeah, we got some wiggle. We got some wiggle in there. Well, I'll be curious to see that lower mainspring R report. Hmm, that's pretty hefty. Not a lot of wear. Wow, that's kind of amazing. That's a these right here. This is the crown wheel. So the stem comes in here. Crown wheels pretty much always have reverse thread on these screws, but typically reverse thread is going to be noted by having two extra scribe lines beside the the central slot there. But this one didn't. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. There's nothing like going snip and realizing you had the wrong side. You're pushing it the wrong way. Gotta be careful. Whew. Hey, that one was pretty loose. Oh. <sighs> pretty beefy plate screws. Mm -hmm. Come on. You can do it. There we go. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, a little hazy, but that's it. All told, I've seen far worse. Okay. Huh, 
There's that lower mainspring arbor. So the upper is, wait, neither upper nor lower is jeweled. Pull that apart in a second. Wind pinion setting wheel. Oop. All right, now, now we are going to take that movement ring off so I can pull the dial. I have a thing I, I like to, if I don't have to pull a screw, I, I usually, for things like movement rings and dial rings and stuff, I don't pull the screws. I just make sure they don't get lost. Okay, so there's that. I'm not saying that's the right approach, but that's my approach. There, you got your dial screws. Come on. Huh, that wasn't tight. Okay. Uh huh. Come on. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, it sure looks like the edges were blue. Looks like it was blue originally. That is some crazy patina. Somebody wore the heck out of this watch. That's nice to see, actually. I do honestly think that's good to see. Someone really liked this watch, and they wore it. That's awesome. I wonder who they were. I wonder if they painted houses or what the deal is. Um, okay, so here's our front. This is one of these cool things right here. You see this? Make sure this isn't too bright. This right here, that is the spring for this diddly thingy here. They have this big hole because you can't really assemble this with the spring with the hole in place so you have you can actually go and you pull the spring from here so it doesn't go kaspoink all over creation because lord knows we do not want things going kaspoink see and then it comes right out isn't that neat Only two screws holding that down. Wow. Make sure I'm still in focus here and that you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm being blinded. That wasn't wasn't tight. And that wasn't tight. Hm. Oops. Oh, no, there's a third screw. I thought so. I thought that was a little too little. That one also wasn't tight. Okay. Yeah, because if you didn't remove that spring here, when you pulled this off, it would go, boom, and that would be the end of it. Yeah, that's some pretty nice machining. Look at that. That's pretty clean. Just in terms of how well it's made. That's a... That's a big piece, and you've got that teeny tiny little edge up there. And unlike Seiko stuff, which is almost, for this thing is, you know, for this same pr area, is stamped. Like here, this, this is the date dial guard, very dirty one, for uh, 7000 series. I think it's a 7006. And you can see it's literally just stamped out of thin metal kapunk. Whereas this one that the Russians made... 
Look at that, it's a machined part. Huh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. Okay. And a solid metal date wheel. Cool. This is a nice looking watch. Look at that, it's all metal. Hmm. You a little diddly here. Oh, that's your date driving wheel. Now, one of the things I always do, forget to do before, until it's too late, is to make sure I've got something on top of this so that if it goes kaspoink, I can catch it like that. Because unlike Seiko, I don't have buckets of these parts sitting around. Isn't that, wow, is that old school too? Look at that, the entire fitting is a, die shock setting, setting is a screw in piece. That's old school. Wow. Old school. Okay, let's pull these keyless works. It's funny that we use a term like keyless works. It's so old. The idea being it's from the time when clocks, when watches, pocket watches, literally had a key with them so you could wind them like a mantle clock. So it's like we're still trying to differentiate that this is a modern style watch that has key, it doesn't have a key. What a strange idea that we keep using the ancient terminology. Come on. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, you don't want to, but you're gonna. Would you get out of there? Out. Out. Hang on a second. Would you get out, out, out? There, fine, thank you. Jeez, how hard was that? Okay, it's nice for all the little bits of water that got in. We don't have any rust, which is nice. There we go. This is always a good time. I always, with these, you want to make sure you, you look at what side, if there's any difference between the two, how they look. So we've got an utterly flat top, uh-huh, and a little inset on the bottom. Okay. Yeah, because there's a little step in there. Now, that is... There you go, your shepherd's crook. And this should this should pop right out, and it does. And that on the other side, a little pressy thingy. Can pinion. Center wheel. Yeah, that's. That's chunky. Hang on. Sorry about that. I had an emergency. Oops. Me that I forgot one more thing.
Oh, it's a spring for an instant date change. I see. Gosh darn it, Milo. I see. Now something like this, I'm not going to bother pulling that. It doesn't move and the system will clean it out. So now, let us put the balance back. that put this screw back together and we'll run this whole thing through the cleaner I've got all the case apart and everything else like that it is in the big cleaner and I will run this through the little cleaner and then we'll revisit and see how it goes okay got it all out of the cleaner there's our mainspring and because of course this is a manual wind the, there's a limit it doesn't have a slipping bridle there's a limit to how far you can turn it that's fine. Looks like it's flat. I think generally the watch was pretty clean inside for as rough as it looked outside. So I got the case and everything out of the cleaner. Isn't that nice, huh? Certainly a lot better than it was. Okay, what's cool is you remember how dirty and nasty the bezel was. I mean, it's still a little rough, but look. you still got all the, the colors and everything in here. The black. Lost a fair amount of plating, but that's okay. This was a working watch. I think it can be nice looking. So let's take this stuff and we'll put this back over here. And now it is time to start putting the movement together. Okay. No sign, no, no date. I don't know, I still don't know when this thing worked or was produced, I should say. Okay. <sighs> Main spring winder. Heading for the hills. Okay. Side of the case back. I don't know, it's just sort of habit of mine to use this as a little tray. I don't know if that's the right thing or the wrong thing to do, but that's what I do. Huh. Would you stop it? Okay, that's where that is. Yeah, that's a little blown out, but. I don't even think that I have a jewel that would work for that, even if I wanted to do it. I mean, I could. Uh... Okay, that's the calendar side. You never pick the right thing first. 
There's this. All right. Cool. There we go. So we've got to set up our mainspring. We still got some deposits on here. I mean, my fluid's clean. I don't know what that would be. Hmm. Some in here, too. It's not deadly. I just, you know, I clean this stuff before I go through it. But it should be cleaner when we're done. Hmm. Okay, so the way these work is you can tighten them in and out depending on the final size. Because there's nothing worse than winding a mainspring and then finding that you've wound it too big and you can't get the can't get the drop into the barrel. So I always like to make sure that I can do that so it drops in cleanly. Okay. I think that ought to do her. Tighten that down a little bit. This one coils counterclockwise. Or as I call it, anti-tsunami. So let's get that done. Yeah, this looks pretty good. It's amazing. The guy, I, I don't understand why the inside looks so nice, relatively speaking, and the exterior was... It, maybe it just had a real short, hard-working life. I don't know anything about the history on it, on the piece. You know as much as I do. Okay. So there's that. That's your little plunger. That's how you turn. Make sure it's not caught anywhere weird. You don't ever want to have this little tab end sticking out because it'll make your job much harder because it wants to catch. Hang on a sec. Yeah. Let me go on. Slip this in here to keep that because if you just try to pull this out, you're going to pull out the mainspring too. You can turn it backwards. As you turn, you're holding it in place. And there you go. Hmm. So. Again, this all falls under the heading of, this is what I do, might not make it right. But even for hand winders like this, I like to have a little bit of 8200 in here. Not a lot, just some. It'll move around. Uh-huh. You see? It did the thing. Hmm. Okay, hang on. This is going to be touchy. See, I screwed up. There's that tab sticking out. So I have to get on this to get that to fold in right. Okay, that wasn't too bad. So there it is. All nice and clean. All right. Let's get it. I know it doesn't go there. Let's see what we find. So this one was square down, teeth down, anti-tsunami. That's sort of a little mnemonic thing that I do to keep an understanding of where things are supposed to go. Hmm. 
Okay. Drop in. There we go. Good. Good, good, good. Oh, boy. Okay. I tend to use a little heavier stuff on this. I mean, probably a little heavier than a lot of other people use, but... Like I said, it works. Works for me, anyway. I'm sure there are going to be a dozen people commenting on this video telling me just how wrong I am, and that's fine. People love telling other people how wrong they are. Which gets some folks through the day, I guess. Okay, so there it is. There is our barrel. Nice and clean. Make sure that that's snapped into place. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's our shim. Okay, so let's make sure everything's there. Okay, good. We have... Both die shock springs. We have a slate and a set of tweezers. Let's try that again. This all looks pretty okay. I don't know. Should I think about dueling this? I could. It's a nice movement, I mean, hmm. Okay, well, let me do some poking. Okay, making progress. These, uh, these super, super fine little springs, die shock springs were a little funky to work with, but once you learn the trick of it, it's fine. These are, normally with Seiko, you have to be careful and you hold it in place and you do all the stuff. This, you just slot it in and then there's not a lot of friction, you just turn it and there you go. So, we got that done. Let's get this balance off of here and put it on one side while we do the rest of our work. Come on. You can do it. Oh gosh, one of the dial screws dropped off in the cleaner. Okay, well, good thing is I know where that is and we'll be able to get it. Would you get out of there? Typical Russian stubbornness. That is safe. Now, always the fun thing with things is like, okay, what are we going to do first? Um, I decided I did find a jewel that would fit this, but looking at it, I just decided not to. I'm like, it's not that worn. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to freak out about it. Not like I'm going to be depending on this watch to... There's nothing that can be done to this watch that would require me to do that kind of major surgery. It's not needed. Okay. Would you stop it? 
And we have our center wheel. Yeah, this is a nice beefy center wheel. I like it. I like it. Nice. Okay. Yeah, even the upper port isn't that is is barely worn. I I don't think this is really a high test model. So first things first on this, when you have separate train bridge and barrel bridge, I always like to do the train first, so you can make sure everything's in nice running condition. amazing. Every basket I've touched is the last one I need. Every single time. Okay. <sighs> what am I doing? Ooh, magnetized. Sorry for making you look at the back of my head. Okay, let's let's get this thing assembled. Okay, got that all done. Look at that. A little bit of momentum. See how sweetly it turns. Gosh, it makes me happy. Uh, let's see now. Let me get that. Where is that? Um, no, that's winding. That's calendar side. Okay. Yeah, the, I mean, for the for what these are. <clears throat> valued at by the market these days this is a pretty decent movement you always want to make sure that before you seat your screws that everything is down all the way nothing like snapping off a pinion as you go for that final seat ask me how I know yeah look at that Okay. Wake up all There's that. Okay, so that's nice and tight. Look at that. Isn't that neat? It's beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, let's drop this pinion in without sending it into space. Yeah, and that's how it works. That's how it works. That looks nice. Okay. Aha, I am a dingle butt. I'm supposed to do the barrel bridge first, because this wheel 
is in the way. I'm supposed to tuck in under this and I can't do that. If the barrel bridge, if the train bridge is not able to be lifted up. So I'm going to try to do it live, which is not the best way to do it, but that's what I'm doing it. That's how I'm doing it. That's got to get under there. Wrong tweezers. This is stupid. I should just pull those wheel. I should just pull that bridge and be done with it. Yeah, because this is just... I mean, I, it could be worse. At least I verified that the train is good, huh? Let's try that again. Let's get that out. Oh, that's something else to check too. <sighs> yeah. Shoot, stop it, stop it. Ugh does this thing yeah no that's got to come back out the release button it's weird how can something go on so easily and then it refuses to come back out would you get out 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 get out out she's oh Pete come on out Stuff isn't hard, man. Get out, jackass. Okay, so let us look in another place. Because I forgot all of that crap. See this? That is the release button. And it has to go underneath that bridge. If it's not there, this won't work. Now you're not going to go in because you're sulking. decent. All right. Okay. Well, let's put this back together. And before I bolt everything down, let's make sure that it runs. I don't know, I think that's kind of, that's, I like the, I more like the idea of being able to get to the train more than the barrel, but that's what they decided to do. Would you stop it? Stop it, stop it. This is Bergeon, it's supposed to be high quality, what the fuck?
Hang on a second, I need to be making progress. There's some things you just, you can't fiddle around with. You've got to be on top of it. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Nope, 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 nope. Nobody knows that. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Gosh, it's so quiet upstairs. I wonder what they're doing. Okay. A little friction spring. That one too. Okay. Let's again always make sure that we are we are turning. We are turning. Okay. Sorry if everybody's sick of hearing me say K. Okay. Wonder what that's for. A little blurk. Wonder what that's for. Okay, come on. Come on. You can do it. There you go. That's tucked in place. Yeah. Look at that, huh? Isn't that nice? Yep, apparently I did something right. So now... All right. There's the crown wheel. Let's... Get this thing lubed up. Like a little crown wheel action to get the blood running. Ladies think that all men think about is sex. In fact, what we mostly think about is crown wheels. Remember, this is reverse threaded. I'm a, that's the only thing about this movement I'm truly annoyed is that thing should be clearly marked that it is reverse thread. So, there. And it isn't. Very, very annoying. Okay. Hmm. side because we don't need that right now. Yeah, look at that. My fluid is clean. What the heck is this stuff? It's not supposed to look like that. Get that cleaned out. Huh. I wonder what that was. 
Hang on a second. Okay. Let's get things going. Make sure we are where we need to be. Yes. Boop, boop. Gosh darn it, now I'm annoying myself saying that all the time. I solemnly swear I will stop saying it. I can feel the cannon pinions holding, that's good. stuff. I don't need that. There we go. I'm wondering about this shepherd's crook. Yeah, I'm not going to deal with that that way first. No. No. Dingle butt. That's as it's supposed to be. Oh gosh, I thought I heard my lovely bride coming down to see me. That would be nice. I, don't know, I think she's afraid to come down here because I'll make her be in a video. This is the wrong way to do this, but I'm doing it this way anyway. Nah, screw it. I'm not going to do it that way. Real good way to ruin this shepherd's crook. Like, I have more, but still not cool. Shepherd's Crook in place. Awesome. So now, just check our fitment. Let's see where things are going. Okay. Darn it, I'm not saying it. I swore I'd stop saying it, and yet I'm still saying it. What the heck? Okay, that is, darn it, I said it again. I'm gonna lose my mind. Yeah, there doesn't really seem to be a lot of wear on this movement. 
It really doesn't. It's wild. You would have figured from the outside and from the crazy materials changes that this thing would have been really beat up inside, but not really. I really, I wonder who had it. I wonder who owned this thing. Okay, now we remember that the inside with the shelf goes down. Right there. There that is. There that is. So, the song in my head is Pink Moon by Nick Drake. So if you're bored and want to have an accompanying soundtrack, that is the song to choose. Maybe this would be better if I used this old, this older one. This holds it a little more securely. Or not. I'm not sure. Okay. So we see. We see. Keyless Works are doing what they should. Good. Okay. Damn it. Um. Let's see. Our wheel. Mm -hmm. So this didn't work at all. <sighs> Criminy. This is not made for Russian watches, but what the hell. I'm used to using it. Everything is just magnetized like crazy. So what we got here is we've got a spring-loaded diddly to do an instant day change. So it goes kaspoink. I don't know the lift angle on these. That's could be kind of a challenge. Okay, come on. <laughs> that is binding up on me for some reason.
That's it. Good. Fine. Let's see what happens if we get a good, nice click here. There it is. Okay. I said it again because I suck. So now. <laughs> okay, where did I put that? Where did it go? Did I drop it? Gotta be careful when you're moving stuff. You always gotta watch what you're doing. Gotta make sure you're looking directly at the thing you're moving. Otherwise... Where did that come from? Huh. I think I dropped that part. Okay, I have to go look for it. If I'm gonna go look for parts, I'm gonna get that screw for the dial too. Oh, wait, no, here it is. That's the thing, man. I'm telling you, you've got to stay on target. When you're moving something tiny, don't ever look away. I can't tell you the number of times I've looked down and the thing, whatever the thing is, is simply gone. Like, where in the heck did it go? So, here we go now with this beautifully machined piece. And our date wheel. a little shinier. So it looks like the channel for this date wheel was lubricated. Because I'm taking old lubricant off of here. Somebody's coming down here. Oh, that's so sweet. Sebastian's trying to tuck his elder sister into coming down and watching TV. I guess they're watching a movie or something. A little bit of lube going on here, not a lot. Yeah, there's that haze again. When the heck is that from? I seriously, I just changed my fluid. Something's fighting me. <laughs> I 
guess I could do this the other way. You really are fighting me, and I'm not quite sure why. Knock it off, knock it off. Cut the crap. Okay, I think that's good. What the heck is going on up there? screw go. Oh, it's right here. Everything's turning the way it ought to. So the last part of this is to put in this springy wingy dee boo. <laughs> Just like that and that's the way it happens so let's test it again actually no I don't want to no I'm not gonna do that right now I'm not gonna deal with that right now let's turn this over and let's put that ring on because that'll make it much easier to handle this movement Stop fighting me. Stop fighting me. It's not going to change anything and it doesn't do anybody any good. Next screw. Yeah, so this is what my work life is like. People think I live in this wonderful, amazing mecca of beauty and watches and rainbows and crazy stuff like that. Nope, it's mostly being very, very quiet. I do have a visitor, so if you want to just hang on, that'd be great. I've got to drop the dial on. But before I do that,
there. That's for me because this is my watch. Oh gosh, that's right, I have to go get that okay, get real close now. Dial is on, ring is on. Pallet fork. Sorry, I'm, I'm looping up the stones and I've got to be right on top of it. Okay, there's that. I wish I knew how old this was. I wish I knew how when it was made. My uh, Vostok sub clock is dated. Come on. Okay, I want to be right on top of this. Okay. So now, God, I said it again, didn't I? Jesus. Time for our handy dandy little teeny tiny. Last up, this ought to be fun. I hope. <laughs> I see. The shim slides in. side. So I can actually pull that out a little. I just, you know, sometimes I'm not super happy with doing it that way, but, you know, okay, fine. You never really appreciate how well you know how to do something until you try to do something different. Like work on a movement that you don't normally work on. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. There's that. This shouldn't be as hard as this is. Come on. 
would stop fighting me. Well, he wants to run. Gosh, my kids sure do fight a lot. interesting so you have to have the shim out like this but still in the slot here where that is then you get this mostly screwed down then you slide the shim back in then you seat it that looks like it's got some nice amplitude look at that huh okay well let's fire up the time grapher I really am ridiculous Worse than a mad scientist. I don't know what the lift angle is on this, so I'm just going to punt and put it at 52, which is very normal. There's that. Okay, so hang on. Stop it. Whoops. Okay, so... I don't know what I'm going to find. No idea. Ooh, a lot of beat air. Wow, look at that amplitude. Holy cow. Hang on a second. Okay. Let's get rid of that beat air. This is amazing, you know, you have an inexpensive Vostok dive watch that got the bejesus beaten out of it. And we're getting these kind of, would you turn it on? We're getting these kind of numbers. You have beautiful Seikos that have never been abused. You always have a little bit of a challenge. Okay, so we got to get rid of that. That got rid of some of it. And what I'm doing is I'm moving the stud, the adjustment arm that holds the stud for the hairspring, and I am moving it uh, as it turns out, and it is turning the, is effectively making the hairspring shorter, which increases the accuracy, makes it more flat accuracy. I think I went a little too far. Yes, I did. Okay. Now, let's push up the volume. I went a little too much. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that for now and uh, I'm gonna move forward. Let's drop the I wanna let it run in. Get some real sort of odd amplitude stuff going on. Or accuracy rather. Hmm. Okay. Okay, some days later, uh, I'm looking at this again because I did more research. It's amazing how inexpensive these are. 
So I've serviced this. It's all together. It's clean. But um, the handset is just, despite all my tricks, the handset just looks awful. You can barely see it. So I'm going to figure out, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm either going to, I'm going to re, I'm going to clean out this handset and see if I can get the metal to clean up. Um, also, I looked and looked and looked and looked, and I finally found, I think, two or three examples which have all the particular things that this has. It has the right case back with the little seagull on it. Uh, it has this particular dial with no maker's mark on the dial. It has uh, this exact uh, dial text and this bezel insert. These hollows and lines are all supposed to be red. So I'm going to fill that with red, and I'm going to think about handsets. Normally I'd be like, no, you got to stick with the original handset, but these watches are so inexpensive, I should please myself. The rest of it's pretty cool. Working on it, it's actually what something I didn't know is that these designs, or actually the case designs, are uh, a sort of a super compressor. Both the crown and the case back, the way that they work, is, uh, is the deeper you go, and also the crystal, the, the pressure will cause the seals to get more, more, basically get more watertight. Very interesting. Okay. So it is a good number of days later, and I have some time because I'm awake, doing other stuff. So the handset, as you remember, was pretty jacked up. I simply could not get it clean. Um, so I said, screw it. And I'm going to please myself. And so I stripped out the old damaged loom. And I uh, I have the handset now all cleaned up. Despite all the rust on the surface. Um, despite all the rust on the surface, they actually cleaned up pretty well. Uh, I had to clean them a whole bunch. And then I didn't... And then they had to soak in brasso, basically. They just sat in brasso to to sort of react with the corrosion and the rust, and I was able to get most of that off, actually. Came up pretty well. I did a final polish with a teeny, tiny amount of uh, flitz polish. I mean, tiny, tiny, tiny amount. Just very gently getting this to get the surface smoother. And I'm going to reloom the hands. And also, because again, I'm pleasing myself, I'm going to loom the pip on the insert. I've gone ahead and I've started filling these with red paint. And I topped these up with black. And I'm going to clean this stuff. And I'll put a, a clear coat over the top. But uh, some of these models had this pip loomed. I'm going to go ahead and loom it. I'm going to make myself happy. And there it is. So... What has Insomnia given us, but a full restoration on a $28 watch. Or was it $23? It's funny, I have owned a few of these in the past. My, my brother-in-law was a, a businessman who worked in, lived in Moscow from like 1991 until, I don't know, a few years ago. And I actually went and visited them. Uh, and so I saw they had tons of these things, tons of them, all brand new. And all the ones that I got, you know, at markets and stuff like that, they 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 would they were pretty. I liked the way they looked in their bright colors, but they didn't run for very long. This one, as from, from near as I can tell, from similar listings, was made in the 1980s. I don't know if that's right. That's what I'm told. I got, uh, so I made sort of an aged loom. It went a little pinker than I would have liked. I should have added some yellow. But it's not bad looking. And all the glow is the same. The hand surface is cleaned up nicely. Um, one of the things, I actually do like the case. I like the case dimensions. I like the sort of... Um, the asymmetry of it and how it has these sort of curves, these flowing curves. I'm a big fan of the big crown. I really like that big crown and these sort of asymmetrical crown guards that come down like this. And I've never been a fan of like bright metal bezels. 
pretty much, except in this case, I actually, I've always liked these for their, just their simplicity. You know, a couple weeks later, and here we have it. I've just been working on it slowly, but the hardest thing was going through all my stuff and finding things that would work, like finding a crystal that would work that kind of stuff and doing all the weird little cleaning one has to do I think it came out pretty well old hold I don't know what in the world to wear it on and I also wish even though this sweep hand is correct like this there were a few that I found that were just like this and they had this this sweep I considered painting this red because I, I would think it would give a nice counterpoint but I left it alone And there it is. That's what happens when you have a 20 something dollar watch and you can't sleep. Okay. Thanks for watching this ridiculous video. Now I have to figure out what to do with the thing.